Hello everyone, welcome back to the Home Lab. Today we have a very important topic to discover, backups. So most people try to follow a 3-2-1 rule of backups. Three copies of data, two different mediums, one of which is off-site. Most of us aren't quite there. We'd like to be, but we're not. So what's one of the easiest ways you can get the different media and the off-site backup? It's to pay someone else to host your data. It's a fancy name for using the cloud, because the cloud is basically someone else's computer. So, if we already have good backups on-site, let's take the next step and make Proxmox push our backups off-site. Say it with me, RAID is not a backup. So today in this video, we are going to learn about hook scripts in the Proxmox backup scheduler, and how we can use them to push backup files off-site automatically when a scheduled backup runs. This video is pretty software heavy, so I'm going to assume you already have a running Proxmox setup. This doesn't use Proxmox backup server, this is purely Proxmox VE, the virtualization environment. So let's get started, shall we? So this is my Proxmox instance. I have a job scheduled to run at 3 a.m. every morning to do a backup to my NAS. And I want to do a backup every week to cloud storage. So the feature I'm going to use to do this is called a hook script. So the documentation on this is really sparse. It just says, you may specify a hook script. And there is an example. And I had a really hard time finding this example because it's not linked here. But I did end up finding a version of it. And I put that on my website if you want to see the original. So going back to Proxmox, we need to add a new job. And we can do this through the GUI. So I'm going to say I want it to run every Sunday at 1 a.m. It's reasonable once a week. I don't need to back up everything quite so frequently to the cloud. And just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to back up one VM. I know this VM is pretty small, so it shouldn't take a long time to upload. Some of these VMs can get quite large, and if you're uploading all of them to the cloud, you need a pretty good internet connection. I'm going to use the standard compression, snapshot mode, and you can choose your email settings however you want, and retention. And retention isn't exactly going to matter because the backup script we're going to write is actually going to delete it anyway. Also note that I put it on my NAS, and that is because we need to initially do the backup to local storage. Then we can upload it to the cloud. So in this case, I've set my NAS the target. I could set it local storage as the target. And then every time it does a backup, it backs up to local storage, and then it copies that file from local storage up to the cloud. But you need some place on the local system or local network to temporarily put the backup while you're uploading it to the cloud. So now I have this created here. So let's go into the console and see what that looks like in the actual vzdump config. So that configuration is stored in Etsy PVE, and it's called jobs.cfg. So in this case, this is the backup we just created. So you can see it has options and values. So if we want to add a script, we could add script. And we need to think of what our name for our script is going to be. So I'm going to call it vzdump.perl, and I'm going to put it in the root directory. So save that. If we go back and we edit the job through the GUI, we won't see that it has anything has changed. But the script option is still retained in the background. It's not going to delete it just because we modified it. So now we need to create that file. And we're already in slash root, because that's the root user's home directory. So we're going to make a new file called vzdump.pl. I'm going to paste this in for my website. And we can review it. So this example script uses our clone to copy something somewhere else. So essentially what happens is the script is passed a number of arguments and environment variables to tell it what phase of the backup job we're in. So if we're in job start, job end, or job abort, that's the backup job as a whole. So if it's backing up more than one VM, these only get called once. And we get some options of what's going on. And then we have other phases here, backup start, backup end, etc. And these are done per backup. So for each virtual machine, you're going to have a backup start, a backup end, etc. And those come with some additional data. So we can get the VM ID and the mode as arguments, and we get some other things like the VM type, the directory we're putting the file in, uh, etc., as environment variables. And one of them is called target, and that is the absolute path on the local system 
to the backup file name. And so this includes the mount point. So if we use remote storage, this gets the remote storage gets mounted somewhere on the local system, and this file is that file. So I'm going to comment out the rsync calls just so we can see what the script would do. So it's a system or die. Because I don't want to actually call our sync. And let's see what happens when we run this. So we get the script is not executable. Oops. So that's one of the things that prevents us from putting the script in the Etsy PVE directory. Because Etsy PVE is synced with all nodes in the cluster. So ideally we just like to put all our files in there. But permissions in Etsy PVE are defined by the file system and we can't modify them. So we can't make them executable. So chmod plus x, so that I had the executable flag. So we wouldn't be able to do this if we put the file in the in Etsy PVE. And that's why I put it in the root user's home directory. So if I look at what's going on, you can see that the, the hook script is printing information and it's going in this info line. So hook job start, it's um, going to mount PVE iridium dump. Story is iridium. When we get down here to backup end, you can see our tar file is mount PVE iridium dump VZ dump QMU 111 date time the VMA to ZST. So this is the file name we need to copy up to our cloud provider. And we need to do it in the backup end phase. And we need to do it for each VM. So we'll, the hook script will be called in backup end for every single VM we're backing up. So this will get called several times if you have a lot of VMs to back up. And then we also have log end and that um, in that case, we use the log file. So we need to write some code in the backup end phase and the log end phase that copies this up to our cloud service. And at this current point, we really have no way of doing that. So we need to install some tools that let us send data to our cloud service. So the tool we're going to use for this is called S3 command. It's a command line utility to interact with the Amazon S3 protocol. And just because I've said Amazon doesn't mean we have to use Amazon object storage. The S3 protocol has become a de facto standard for a lot of cloud providers that provide object storage. And so if you use Backblaze or Linode or whatever, they're going to support S3 protocol to their object storage and S3 command is going to work with them. So it's not a particularly difficult program to use and it's really tiny. So let's go ahead and install that in our Proxmox system. It's already in the package repo, so we can just install it. Look at that, less than a megabyte. So while this installs, you're gonna to wanna to get your access credentials set up on your cloud provider. Now I use Linode and I'm not gonna share my access credentials here, but I will walk you through the process of how to set them up. So now that we're done installing it, we're gonna run S3 command configure. And this will configure a file in the root user's home directory that includes the access key to access S3. So it's going to ask us a few questions, and we are going to need to find this information from our hosting provider. So when it asks you for the region, this depends a little bit on your hosting provider. For Linode, they've specified to always leave the region as US and use the host field instead of the region field. So here is the endpoint, and this is where we put in our provider. In my case, I am using Linode, and my host is the new work host, so it's US East 1 linodeobjects.com So in this case we need to give it the path to the bucket which in this case for me is percent bucket dot us east one dot linodeobjects.com if you want to use client-side encryption, you can add a GPG key. I'm going to leave that out. Use HTTPS. Yes, we want to do that. We have no proxy server. If you have a proxy server for HTTP, you'd put it here. So it created a file called S3 CFG that includes the configuration for S3. That means we can run S3 command in the future and it will just use these settings without us having to type them in every time. If you'd like, you can put this file in Etsy PVE and create a symlink from slash root. That'll automatically replicate this file across your cluster. 
So I have a bucket here that I just created called Apple and Proxmox. That's what I'm going to be using to test. And you can see that S3 command was able to connect. One thing that's important to know about the S3 protocol is you can't modify files. You can only put them, delete them, and read them. So even if Proxmox supported incremental backups, we'd have to store each increment as a separate file, or we'd have to download, modify, and re-upload the file, which is not ideal. So the fact that Proxmox doesn't do incremental backups aside from Proxmox backup server doesn't really impact this too much. We're still going to be uploading the entire VM image to the cloud service every time, which is why I'm not doing it super frequently. So now that we know how to use S3 command and we know our vzdump script, let's edit that script to use S3 command instead. So here's what we got. So if we're at the backup end phase, we call S3 command put the backup file, which is the tar file, into the bucket else upload backup fail. And in the end of the log, it will be the same for the log file. So it took a snapshot of the VM, which it does using ZFS if you're using ZFS, it then copies that snapshot. So now we've called the backup end hook. It has 865 megabytes to work with. So it could take a while. Yep, here we go. So we're getting progress from S3 command. Let's put it into 15 meg chunks. And has 58 of them. So this will be a while. There we go. Backup job finished successfully. So now we should have our VMA file and our log file on the S3 bucket. But they're also still going to be on the local system. So we need to delete those. So if I do an S3, S3 LS, it should tell me that there's the... Yeah, so we got the log file and the Z standard... DMA file. So these are our backup and our log. So they're there, but they're also on the local system. So the next trick we want to do is we want to clean up these log files after some amount of time. Because we don't just want our S3 bucket to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe if you pay for infinite storage, then that's okay for you. But I don't. So searching around, I found a nice script that uh, someone wrote in Bash to use S3 command to delete old files. So we're going to create a script called S3 cleanup. And we'll paste in our script. And make it executable. And let's try to run it just to see what happens. And I'm going to tell it anything more than 10 minutes old. Okay, so it seems it only works on days, not minutes. Um, it just deleted everything. So now we're going to add this to our vzdump file. Don't forget the final versions of all of these will be available on my blog. So let's run that again and see if it does the deletion. So as soon as it's done uploading the next part, it should then upload the log file, and then it should delete everything because we told it negative one days old. There it goes. So the job end took, it decided it should delete the files because they were more than negative one days old. So obviously, if you change that negative one to be some time in the past, instead of in the future, it would delete old files. So hopefully this tutorial helps you improve your backup workflow. Comment down below if you liked this. You can like and subscribe. I've got a Discord server down below if you want to chat with me later. I'll see you on the next adventure. And don't forget, RAID is not a backup.